What's going on everybody, Jolt here from the Token Minorities and I am back with my week one battle from the GBA D-League Season 3 this week against Six Foot Hacks Leo. If you aren't already familiar with him, I'd be a little bit surprised, but he's of course the coach of the Durham Dragons. Make sure to check him out. He will be linked in the description below. Uh, very high quality content creator and one of my personal favorites. Now, before I jump into this battle, if you haven't already seen the team builder, I did split them up for this video and I plan to do so for the rest of the GBA D League. So make sure to go check out the team builder video if you are interested in seeing the nitty gritty uh, thought process behind the EV spreads, the reason why I brought the Pokemon I did. It's all pretty uh, completely explained in the team builder, a little more so than I actually us uh, usually do for my team builders, so make sure to check that out, check that out if that is something you are interested in. Also, before I jump into the team matchup here, big shout out to my front office for the help in building this team. Uh, some of the most notable people who helped out this time around were uh, Zazo, Iron Flash Gaming, Magic, otherwise known as David. Uh, I had help from people like Aberforth and as well as Halu and Carson. I have a lot of guys in my front office. I'm going to try to link all of them in the description below throughout the season, quite honestly, because they're all super helpful in terms of making this happen now. One more shout out I want to give before I jump into this. Shout out to the graphics guys who helped make all this stuff that I'm using for this season. Those include Freeze Lander, also goes by That Fries, or That Freeze on uh, Showdown for his battles. He made this pretty layout that you see right now around the video, as well as what you saw in the team builder and what you saw in the draft analysis. So big shout out to him and of course a shout out to Asteroid Videos who uh, created the intro that you saw at the beginning of this and of course a shout out to Glitch X City for the background music as well. So now let's jump into this battle a little bit. As you can see at Team Preview, my opponent Six Foot Hacks decided to bring the Kieran Black, Don Fan, Greninja, Sovali, don't know what type it is at this point, the Mega Aerodactyl and the Reuniclus, while I brought my Zoroark, Scolipede, Torn T, Seismitoad, Mew, and Mega Kangaskhan. Now just to very briefly go over the sets here that I'm bringing for this particular game, the Zoroark is Choice Scarf, allowing me to outpace the Mega Aerodactyl as well as potentially disguise as my Mew or my Mega Kangaskhan in this matchup. I have the Scolipede, which is just the Swords Dance 3 Attacks Adamant variant with the Buginium Z, has coverage for his entire team. I have the Torn T, which is Assault Vest, and able to deal with the likes of both Trick Room Reuniclus and Greninja. Also would have been Salazzle if he brought it. But fortunately, I guess for me, he did not bring it, so that takes a little less pressure, a little uh, a little pressure off of the Torn. Uh, the Seismitoad is there as my rocker, as well as just an additional means to check Greninja and to check Mega Aerodactyl. I have the Mew, which is the win con in this game with bulk up Thunder Punch, Leech Life, and Drain Punch. It just straight up beats his team. It has a lot of bulk investment, both on the special side and the physical side. More so on the special side, but bulk up, of course, will boost my physical defense. And then I have the Mega Kangaskhan, which is just a very uh, a powerful offensive mon in this game. I believe I'm running a Jolly Nature and also have Ice Beam on it for the Dawn Fan. I have Work Up as well to potentially boost my power output as combination of Return plus Crunch plus Ice Beam with Work Up just beats his entire roster as well. So that's the general team that I'm bringing here. Again, check out the team builder if you want the specifics on that. Now, just looking at the team preview here, uh, he brought pretty much all the threats I expected. When I was looking at his draft, I most expected to see the Kieran Black the uh, Mega Aerodactyl and the Reuniclus, and I thought it was very likely he would bring some sort of defensive Silvali to help him check my Scolipede, as nothing on his entire roster is able to take the coverage combination of Poison, Bug, and Water, so he needs to have something to be able to deal with that, as I really do think that was the most likely set for me to bring, as I needed Poison coverage for the potential Tapu Fini. I needed the Aqua Tail to be able to deal with the Mega Aerodactyl and the Dawn Fan, although Rock Slide would have also worked, but regardless, I also so of course wanted to have Mega Horn to help me hit the Reuniclus as hard as possible as well as just do a bunch of damage to most of the rest of his team as he really does lack bug resists um, outside of like the Mega Aerodactyl and the Tabu Finny if I recall correctly. So um, that's a thing, but yeah, so we pretty much brought most of the team I expected, also having the Dawn Fan and the Greninja. So I think the Dawn Fan is probably his dedicated switch into the Mega Kangaskhan, unless he is using something along the lines of a Rocky Helmet Reuniclus to fill that role. But uh, just looking at this composition, I do think that the Dawn Fan is a very, very, very likely Rocky Helmet user uh, just to help him chip down Mega Kangaskhan early. So what I'm actually going to do is in this battle is I'm going to lead off with my Zoroark disguised as the Mega Kangaskhan, because what that can do is, depending on what he leads off with, that could get me early momentum with the U-turn, 
or it could allow me to just nuke the Don Fan on the switch in, as I really think that would be his initial switch in. As Don Fan looking at this team is his most likely rocker, as I don't think the Mega Aerodactyl can afford to run Stealth Rock whenever it really needs some combination of Taunt, Roost, potentially Defog, but not as likely. Uh, but it also will want coverage for things like my Seismitoad and for things like my Torn T and my uh, Scolipede. So I think he wants Dual Stabby, I think he wants Roost, and I think he wants Taunt on the Mega Aerodactyl. So that means that he's almost definitely a rocker. Don fan. So I think I can take advantage of that kind of thing on turn one. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right on into this battle. As you'll see, my opponent, Leo, is going to issue the challenge. And he actually, as you'll see here in a second, is going to lead off with his Kirin Black. Now that's actually kind of threatening potentially for my uh, Zoroark lead, but what I'm going to do still regardless is I'm just going to go for a Focus Blast because I do not think at all that he will risk his, uh, I really don't think he'll risk his Kirin Black here on turn one, but I... There's a chance he might as well, so I don't want to take the risk in going for something like a Dark Pulse here. Whenever I have the Focus Blast on deck, I might as well go for it just in case he decides to stay in, as whittling that thing down is also a really nice late game when that's probably the biggest threat on this team to mine, despite the fact that I prep for it very heavily, as I'm able to actually catch the Dawn Fan on the switch in. I get the Special Defense Drop, which isn't the worst thing in the world just because it is in range of a 2 at KO anyways, but he's going to be forced to switch out here, and he goes actually into his Reunicliss, which I thought was very risky, as I just revealed that I was a Zoroark instead of the Mega King is found, I very easily could have gone for a Dark Pulse on that turn, but here, expecting him to definitely not try to stay in here, um, I very well could have pulled an aggressive double, or, or just gone for another Focus Blast here, because there's no way, he's gonna scout to see if I'm a Scarf Zanku, or a Scarf, the, a, uh, Scarf, or Choice Lock, at least Zoroark, uh, so he's going to switch out here, but I wasn't, I don't know, I wasn't man enough to make the play of Focus Blasting again, it also just wasn't really worth the risk, so what I do is I go into my Torn T here, which is overall just a safe middle ground against anything he wants to go into, now here, I'm going to take a little bit of a risk here, assuming that he probably does not have Fusion Bolt on this, um, on this Kieran Black, and even if he does, I don't really think he would go for it in this situation, because my team does not have an Ice Resist, so if he does stay in, I think he will just go for an Ice Beam, and that's exactly what I do, is I just stay in and go for the Focus Blast, get a little bit of chip damage off on this Kieran Black, as he just goes straight for the Ice Beam, and we chew those because of that Assault Vest, so that worked out pretty well, as here, I'm pretty free to just click U-Turn just in case he wants to switch out for whatever reason, but more likely just so I can switch out and get a little bit of regenerator recovery and go into my Mega Kangas gun, which is definitely fat enough to take any hit from this Kieran Black. Now here he's just going to go for the Ice Beam, and because he is not quite fully invested, which was proven by the damage on the uh, Torn T, uh, I'm able to chew that up pretty well. Now here I'm going to make a little bit of a, a very aggressive play, okay? But the risk definitely outweighs the reward, because what I'm doing here is I'm going for the workup, and if he were to switch out and sack off his Dawn Pan, which was the play that I really expected, here. I expected him to scout out my low kick potentially in the Mega Kangaskhan and sack off the Dawn Fan to try to get some uh, damage off of me from the Rocky Helmet. Uh, but uh, that's that's not the play he makes, which, I mean, good on him. He did get the prediction correct, and it makes me look like I played a little too, too aggressively there, but I do still stand by my play as making that prediction, going for the workup in case he goes into Dawn Fan, could have netted me like two kills if I got that right, so I was definitely worth, it was definitely worth taking the risk in my opinion. Now here, the Mew does scare him out. He has to respect the Willow. He has to respect his other coverage moves to be able to hit the Kieran Black. I think I can pack a low kick on Mew, I can pack Drain Punch, obviously, which I do have. So he is going to switch out here into his Mega Aerodactyl, which I did expect to be his primary switch into the Mew, and that's why I brought Bulk Up plus Thunder Punch. So here, after the Bulk Up, I am going to be able to fire off the Thunder Punch as the Mega Aerodactyl Mega evolves and goes for the Taunt, thinking he could stop my setup in my tracks, but no, no, no. All I really need is that plus one from the Bulk Up to be able to put in a ton of work against this team, as whenever my Mew as is at full health, he has absolutely nothing that can immediately revenge me. Even the Greninja with a choice spec to Dark Pulse cannot KO my Mew because of my investment, so um, that's pretty nice. Now here I'm going to Drain Punch instead of Thunder Punch, just in case he wants to roost with his Mega Aerodactyl, but he actually ends up going into his Silvali, revealing this is Silvali Steel, as this is a super effective damage, so now with that key damage on the Silvali, this means that I can actually uh, beat it with a plus 2 Z Mega Horn from Escolabi later on, which is really, really nice. Now here, the only reason he goes to Savali on that Mew as if he has Toxic, so I'm going to make the pretty aggressive play into my Scolipede, knowing that he's going to go for a Toxic, and here I'm going to make a very aggressive play once again, and just click SD, expecting him to try to sack something off, as I think he wants to, uh, he, he should know that he cannot Oko my Scolipede with the Savali. I do think his best play still was to go for a Flamethrower there if he had it, but because he switched out there, I got a very, very free Swords Dance off on the incoming Dawn Fan, and this is going to put me in a fantastic position, actually in a position where I might be able 
able to sweep through the rest of his team. As he just fires off a uh, an Ice Shard, just in case I am focus sashed, I think, and uh, down goes the Dawn Fan here to an Aqua Tail, so we're able to knock out one Pokemon, put the score down at 5 to 5 as here I get the speed boost, and he's going to go into his Jericho, which is once again the Silvali, thinking maybe because he's a Steel type, he can take whatever I have. But, uh, as a matter of fact, we have the Z-Move, of course, and we're going to be able to knock this thing right out. Now, while this animation is going on, I do want to back up briefly, as uh, the Savali did switch out against my Scolipede, and I think the reason why he switched out earlier in the game is because I was somewhat bluffing the fact that I might be Superpower on my Scolipede, and if I was a Life Orb Superpower variant, uh, Adamant Nature, I think even Jolly Nature, I would actually be able to take out the um, take out the Savali from the range it was at, so I can understand the play he made if I was Superpower on my um, Skullipede, which was actually a pretty likely bring considering Superpower also would hit the Mega Aerodactyl just like Aqua Tail does. Um, it's a respectable play that he made on his end, but it is definitely costing him here in terms of his uh, chances in this battle, I feel. So here, after we knock out the Savali with the Z Mega Horn, he's going to go into his Kirin Black, and I whiff the Mega Horn, which really sucks for me, as this would have been, uh, it, pretty much if I hit that Mega Horn, it would have been one more Mon down. There's no way it was surviving, I could very well could have clean swept this game with the Scolipede, but I do actually survive the Ice Beam, which is pretty nice, as we're going to be able to knock out the Kieran Black with the second Mega Horn, which is nice, and uh, unfortunately for me, this means I am now in range of the Greninja. Now, backing up once again, if he had gone for the Flamethrower with the Silvali against my Scolipede while I was bluffing the Superpower, I actually would have survived that guaranteed, and he probably would have tried to pick me up with either the Donphan or Greninja. I would have actually preserved the Scolipede in that case, as either way, that would be a free switch into something else on my team, so just from some uh, food for thought there, but I do lose my Scolipede here. I was willing to risk the Water Shark, and just because I had already taken down pretty much all of the biggest threats on against my team on his team. So uh, here, he actually misses the Hydro Pump on my Assault Vest at Torn T, but that's not the worst thing in the world because I do have Regenerator, and it would not have been able to kill me anyways without a critical hit. So I'm going to fire off the U-Turn, go straight into my Zoroark disguised as the Seismitoad. So uh, we're going to be able to fire off a Choice Scarf U-Turn here against the Greninja, and that will go down here regardless of the critical hit that I believe. I actually get on this turn, so crit definitely did not matter unless he was like a Fizz Def Greninja, which he, I don't think he was based upon the U-turn damage from the Torn T, and that's just a, a kind of a strange set anyways. But regardless, going to go into my Mew now on the double down because, or not necessarily the double down, but going to Mew on the U-turn here just because I know it's able to deal with the potential Reuniclus, which is pretty clearly his win condition in the back. So going to just click the bulk up here. I think he might think that I don't have coverage for this Reuniclus. He might be expecting something like Taunt. He might be expecting something like uh, Recover instead of the coverage move that I actually have on this Mew, which is Leech Life, which is able to both heal me and do a ton of damage to this Reinforce in the process. So he's going to fire off a Calm Mind, but that's not the worst thing in the world. Regardless of his coverage move, he's already revealed to be Leftovers instead of the Life Orb Trick Room set that I'm more expected to see uh, in this matchup. But I'm going to fire off a second bulk up just in case he is a physically defensive Reuniclus, as I do need the second bulk up to be able to guarantee beat this thing 1v1 through the combination of damage and recovery from the leech life. So the second bulk up does guarantee it, and essentially I just have to pray he doesn't confuse me and then fully confuse me over and over again here with the signal beams that was his coverage move of choice to deal with the Mew. So here we're going to fire off the first leech life, and we're going to see that uh, this does like 85%. <laughs> it does a ton. So this is not quite physically defensive or Uniclus. Not entirely sure what his investment was, but the fact of the matter is, as long as this doesn't confuse me, and as you can see, it does not confuse me. Uh, this Mew is going to be able to clean up the rest of the game with ease, as this Mew really put in a ton of work. It did exactly what it was designed to do. All I had to really do was not let it get toxic, and that's exactly the game plan that we were able to pull off here. The Silvali came in earlier in the game kind of thinking it might be able to toxic me and prevent me from getting out of hand later. Sniffed that out, went hard into the Scolipede, bluffed the superpower, he switched out on the Scolipede, gave me the free plus two, and uh, Scolipede basically just paved the way for the Mew, which is all I really needed it to do here in this matchup. So we are going to be able to take out the Mega Aerodactyl here on the following turn, as all we can really do is pray for a crit with a Stone Edge, or maybe go for a Toxic here and hope I misplay or something. I don't really know. I, I don't think it was really anyway is going to be able to break through the Mew even with a crit there. Uh, so Mew is going to be able to kill off the Mega Aerodactyl and the Toronto Staraptors are going to begin the D-League with a 1-0 plus 4 
deferential. So, uh, very good game to Leo. Uh, I think for the most part he played pretty well. I know, I know he's kind of upset at himself over the play with Silvali switching that out against the Scolipede. I can understand the play though, and it's it's not a bad play what he made. I think it was I think it was risky to an extent, um, but I, I don't know. Obviously, in hindsight, the better play for him would have been to stay in with the Silvali and click flamethrower versus my Scolipede, but um, it was a bluff that I made that did work out there in that instance where um, like I've already said, I bluffed superpower. If I was superpower with a life orb, I could have KO'd Savali from the range it was at. Um, it more might come down to how he let it get weakened by the Mew potentially, but then again, I can understand that play because I just put Thunder Punch. So, you know, a lot goes into that, and uh, he did play well for the most part. So, uh, full credit to him on that. But as for us, we do start the season on the right note, and very excited about that as well. So, next week we have a game against Daniki. Uh, and his Rosa Radenborg and uh, it's going to be a tough matchup I think because he does have Magirna and as many of you know Magirna is an absolute monster regardless of how good a matchup might be against it so um, yeah that's that's going to be annoying to deal with for sure but I think we could probably work our way around it I really like the options that my draft has it's very versatile I can do a ton with it I have Mew that literally can do anything and that's pretty nice but even the Mega Kangaskhan I feel in the Torn T and uh, the Zora work they can do so many things and as well as other members of my draft as well so uh, it's looking like a really fun draft to use i'm excited to build more with it here in the future but once again good game to leo and i hope you guys are looking forward to our week two peace